Well, hello everyone. Uh, let's see, these are the last few hours of Earth Day, right? Today is the 22nd Earth Day. Did I get that right? Anyway, um, hope everyone has uh, enjoyed their day uh, doing whatever it is that they needed to do today, including going outside and getting some sunshine or, you know, just taking a walk. All right, so today I'm going to um, do a demonstration, actually, only because this is... Um, it should go very quickly. It's a very small project, and it's something I um, I developed while um, working with flowers because I wanted to do um, I wanted to have very special vases to go with certain arrangements. So I came up with the idea of making um, vase cozies. So um, this is a sample of one, and um, it's actually made from. It's, this is what's on the inside, this little vase, and um, I happen to get these at Michael's. I don't know if they still carry them or not. You might be able to get it directly from the manufacturer, which is, let me see if we can get that clearly. How come it's not autofocusing? I think it's Ashlyn. I should have always my autofocus. But yeah, it is Ashlyn. It's Ashlyn. It's by Ashlyn. And it's about um, five inches tall. It's a little bud vase. So I'm going to um, demonstrate how to do it. It's it's not really very complicated. Um, let's see. I made notes and what did I do with them? Okay, well anyway, I use um, just regular yarn. I decided to make a yellow one because Mother's Day is coming up and I thought maybe I could make something cutesy for Mother's Day with yellow, you know, because it's supposed to be a celebration. So, um, yellow is a, a bright, happy color used for celebrating, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> All right, so, um, it's got, it's made of the base. Okay, this part, the bottom part. And that's like, um, it's like, uh, it's the magic ring and then 12 double crochets and then two single crochets in each double crochet. So you should end up, um, when you're done with the base, you should have 24 stitches. And then the walls, um, there's nine steps. And um, I'll go over them as we go along. Okay, so here we go. And I'm using, let's see, what did I use last time? I think I used a size H hook. Let me try the H. I mean, you can always, you can always adjust the hook size, so that's that's not really... Um, too big of an issue right now. All right, so let's see. Let me try to stay in the camera. I have a tendency to drift out. All right, so let me start with the magic ring. And mine is just really simple. I just throw the yarn over the hook and I hold it like right here. And then I start. So this part right here actually is, is the magic loop. So now I'm chaining three, because that counts as the first double crochet. All right, then I'm going in that first chain and doing another double crochet. And here's my third. My fourth. That's a fifth. Number six, number seven, and you just pull that tail. I mean, it, it works just like the magic ring. Just a very simple way to do it. Um, you can make make it longer if you feel that it's going to slip out. But you know, I've I've done so many things, and by the time you weave, pull it tight and weave it in, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so that was number seven, number eight. No, I haven't crocheted anything in a while. Other crafts have got my attention. Like floral design, card making, button making. That's 10. So if I do any crochet, it'll, it'll probably be very, um, you know, in the future, it'll be very um, small projects. I don't see, I don't think I'll be doing any 
really large projects. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? All right, okay. So let, let me just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so that's my twelve double crochets. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first chain three. <clears throat> And chain one, and then do a single crochet, and another one right next to it. And then in these top chains of the next double crochet, put in two single crochets, and we're going to do that all the way around. One, two, one. And then the last one. One and two. Okay, so let me pull that. There you go. See? Tighten right up just like a magic ring. Just like the other one. And look how long that is. That's enough to weave in so that it won't come out. So. <clears throat> Alright, now I'm going to I'm going to slip stitch into the back loop of the first single crochet. And chain three. That counts as the first double crochet. And now I'm going to put a, a double crochet in the back loop of all the next stitches. So when I'm done, there should be 24. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good eyes can eyes and bone. Okay, and now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three. But before I proceed, I'm just going to count because the stitch count is very important. It has to do with your being able to um, do your, your increases and decreases properly. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, we're good to go. Alright, so that was, uh, that was row 1 of the wall. Now we're going to do row 2. And row 
two is as follows. You're going to make three double crochets. Um, the first one of which is your chain three, of course. So that's one, two, three. That's your first double crochet. And this time we're, we're going in and under both the loops, top loops of the double crochet. That's two and three. And now we're going to do an increase, which is just two double crochets in the same stitch. Okay. And then we're going to repeat one, two, three, and increase. Unwind my yarn a little bit more. I think I should put it on this side. My flow a little better. There. Okay. All right. One. Two. Three. And increase. And then this is your last increase. Okay, so that was row two. Oh, gosh, I'm going to do something with that yarn. Okay, now row three, row three is just, uh, just going to be double crochets all the way around. So, of course, the first double crochet, once again, is at chain three. Hmm, I just thought of something. The way I could um, make it a little more interesting if it's just a solid color. Ah, I'll go to the next one. I already started this. Yellow, yellow. Springtime colored daffodils, sunflowers, freesias. What else is a yellow flower? Tulips, yellow tulips, yellow roses, yellow orchids. Let's see, are there yellow sweet peas? I don't think so. Oh, yellow Gerber daisies. I love Gerber with daisies. They're <laughs> so cheerful. Of course, I'll have to put some flowers in this once I get it done. <clears throat> Just getting more yarn. All right. Are we there yet? Almost. There's more yellow flowers than the ones I mentioned. Almost there. Let's see, three more.
Okay, and then we slip stitch into the top chain. All right, so that was row three. And I'm just going to pop the vase in to see how it's coming along at each row. Make sure we're getting a nice fit. Okay, so far that's pretty good. All right, now let's see, row four. is as follows. I'm going to do four double crochets. Remember the chain three counts as a double crochet, the first double crochet. Oops, all right, here's my uh -uh. Let's get that a little neater. Okay, so that's two. All right, and then have a big fit. A lot more yarn. Sorry about my disappearance. And I'm back. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, so that was two, three, and four. And an increase, which is two double crochets and one stitch. All right, so we're going to continue around like that. So that's one, two, three, four, and the increase. And one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and another increase, which is two and one. And one, two, three, four, and an increase, I don't think we got two more, two, two or three more, so three, that's right, four. One. See, it works out really pretty quick. And an increase. And I think this is the last set. There's one, two. Three, four, and the last increase. Yeah, the increases and the decreases is why you have to make sure that um, your that first uh, stitch count and all following stitch counts are are accurate. Otherwise, it'll it'll throw everything off. So I, I know I mentioned that earlier that I would state the reason why, and that's the reason why you want to be able to do your, your increases and decreases. Okay, so that was uh, row four. Now row five is going to be the same like row three, just double crochets all the way around. Right, so I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three and chain three for the first double crochet and proceed to make crochet, double crochets all the way around. Yellow is the color of sunlight.
Hmm, I think it's a song that uses those words. I'll look it up later. This color, this particular shade reminds me of daffodils. I love daffodils. We used to have uh, daffodils in the yard. They grew up underneath the rose bushes. There was only a couple of them. <laughs> and they were only out for a little while because that's how daffodils are. They're like, we're here. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Enjoy the fragrance while it lasts. Enjoy the color while it lasts. I think, I think daffodils announce spring. Daffodils and tulips. Oh, um, Lily of the Valley. Yes. Yes, Lily of the Valley. And then there's this little, um, oh, the hyacinth. The fragrance of the hyacinth. Ooh. Oh my God. It can be really strong. I remember I got some, I got a uh, hyacinth. Um, about two months ago. What is this, April? Yeah, because they, they come out about in February. And it was so strong. At first, it gave me a headache. You know, it, it took a while before the fragrance dissipated into the room to where it was tolerable. But, you know, some some um, floral fragrances are really strong. It's a lovely fragrance, but it, it was just so strong. You know? And then there's another one. I forget what that... It's a little, um, it's a little blue flower, and it usually comes out about the same time as, um, as the, um, as the hyacinths. It's like a purpley blue. It looks like, it looks like, um, looks like little blueberries even. Oh gosh, I can see it in my mind, but I can't remember. I'm gonna have to look it up. And that also has a very strong fragrance. It's a little thing. And it's a nice fragrance, but it's it's so strong. I mean, I was surprised, you know, the first time I got them and how fragrant they were. Okay, so we finished row five. I'm just going to do another fitting to make sure we're on track. That's almost perfect. You see that? Look at that. <laughs> I love it. Now you could actually stop. I have done some where I just did like half, you know, for the effect. I like that look. I might, I think I, and now then what we could do is like maybe put like a lacy edge. Oh, see? And that's always how it happens. One idea leads to another idea, to another idea. Of course, there's a number of things you could do with this. I mean, you can, you can, you can make it striped. Like this one is, um, this one is striped. This, this just happens to be the Jamaican colors for various reasons, <laughs> which I will not disclose at this time. But yeah, this is an example of stripes. And um, even more fun than that, let me show you something. This, this one is, um, see how, that's how it's, it's going to just slip on just like that. And I'm going to close that. Now this one took a little more planning and such because it's, it's it's the Panama flag <laughs> a good friend of mine is, is from Panama so and another good friend of mine is from Jamaica so well now I just disclose the reasons all right so um, yeah so you know you can get fancy with these you know, when I when I got the notion to do it, I I, I did quite a few um, different styles and designs. So yeah, they can uh, they can get pretty fancy. All right, so let me finish this yellow one. All right, so we're up to row. Uh oh, 
I lost the directions. Ah! Oh, here it is. Okay. So we're up to row six. All right. So now <clears throat> on row six, we just want to decrease. And actually, that's the only row that you decrease is row six. Okay. So the decrease is as follows. I'm going to do four double crochet. One, two, three. Your chain three counts as the first one. Okay, so that's one, and then two, and then three, and then four. Now, for your decrease, you know, do like this yarn over. Um, put your hook through, grab a loop, pull through two, and then yarn over again, put your hook through the next stitch, pull up a loop, and pull through two, and then pull through three. And that's a decrease. See that? Okay, I'll do it again. I'll show again on the next one. So that's one double crochet, two. So now it's four and a decrease. So let me make sure. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the decrease is yarn over, put your hook through, pull the yarn up, pull through two, yarn over again, put your hook into the next stitch, pull the yarn, pull through two, pull through three okay so now I'm going to go along speedily now it's two oops three <clears throat> four and another decrease <laughs> Okay, another decrease. Decrease, is it four? There's another one. Decrease over the last two. All right, so that was row six. All right, and now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first chain three. And then the next two rows, row seven and row eight, are just um, double crochet. All right, so I'm going to start with chain three at the first double crochet. And Still trying to recall what other flowers that were yellow in the spring. Oh, what else comes out in the spring? Um, springtime, the curly willow comes out. I love curly willow. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Most amazing. Most amazing piece piece of nature. Oh, especially when it's fresh and it's flexible and you can shape it and oh, I love it. 
Movement. Oh, another absolute favorite, wax flower. Yeah, I love the fragrance. It has like a soft little fragrance. It's not actually the blooms themselves that have the fragrance. It's actually the stems. When you break it, you can smell it. It's kind of, it's kind of sweet citrus, but kind of sweet. Very pleasant, very pleasant. Oh, what else comes out? The peonies, yeah. I think the peonies will be out until May. Um, and in May, the irises will come out. Yeah. I'll have to um I'll have to walk around the city and, and see. I like to walk around and, and see all the different flowers that are planted for springtime and take pictures. <laughs> Good way to get exercise, you know. <clears throat> Relate to nature. Downtown Brooklyn is a lot of um a lot of different flower beds around Court Street, around Livingston Street. I remember last year the tulips came out so nicely. And then there was a great big rainstorm. <laughs> and they got demolished. <laughs> it was rain and wind. They were upright one day. And then after that storm, they had petals and leaves everywhere. All right, okay, so that was row seven, and now I will do row eight, which is the same. Slip stitch in two, the first chain three, and chain three. Look how long this video is. I thought it was going to be shorter. It's not really that long. It always, always seems long when you're making it. And then when you play it back, you say, oh, it's not that long. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do a, a crochet cord or a ribbon. I think a nice coordinating ribbon would be nice with this. But I can make a nice pretty bow and put uh, some pretty flowers in. <coughs> now, I might make a, a, a matching card. Yes, I learned how to make cards. Or I might make um, a button. Yes, I learned how to make buttons. I can make buttons, refrigerator magnets, earrings, and other things depending on the parts that I use. So that might be a nice little gift set to make the, the crocheted vase with maybe a refrigerator magnet and a handmade card. You know, give moms the royal treatment, right? <laughs> Where would we be without our moms? <laughs> we would not be here. <laughs> we would not be here. <laughs> Dad, Daddy didn't have the right parts to get us here, so. <laughs> Where would we be without our moms? We would not. Okay, so, um, let me see. We're almost done with row eight. So this is, uh, yeah, this, this was pretty fast. Where would we be without our moms? Or not for our moms, where would we be? Respect. Respect. Okay, that was row eight and the last um the last uh the last double crochet row. Now I'm just going to slip stitch across. That's going to be row nine. Okay, I'm going to do one more fitting before I do that. Let's see, where's... Um... And the thing is, you know, you could have like one or two vases and because you can, you can slide them off and on, 
you know, you can change it to match the occasion. You can do another one for Father's Day, but, you know, let me see what it looks like. Oh, for example, something more manly, right? Here's a camouflage one. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to slide that vase in there. And pull it. This is the, the crocheted um, drawstring. But I've, I've done it with ribbons and, and other. So this could be one, like, you know, for a, a guy, Father's Day, um, the birthday of, of a male family member, you know. Well, you could, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know. And when I look at this, I always say, yeah. I did, I did it, this one, it looks like a grenade, and that's okay, because flowers are the bomb. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, yeah, that's just an example, another example of a, of a different style that can be done. All right, so now, um, oh, I was supposed to do the fitting of the yellow one, okay, I just open it up, pop it out. Yeah, work it a little bit because it, it's crocheted so that it fits around that curvature mostly okay that's what all that increasing and decreasing is about to make it fit all right so now i'm going to slip it in one more time this is the last time i'll slip it in just to because with a different yarn mm, okay i see all right so um <clears throat> on this one i'm going to actually add another row because i see it's a little short it doesn't quite, it's not quite as high. You want it to reach up to this part here. So depending on, depending on the yarn that you use, you might have to adjust it a little bit. But I think the only adjustment that I need to do here is another row. Okay, all right, so I'll take it out. That's, I always do that. All right, so in this case, um, it's gonna be 10 rows. Let me just make a note. Let's add another eight, nine. It's gonna be another double crochet row, and then the last row. Okay. All right. Let's All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Do I have any more stories to tell? Okay. So I'm gonna go back and because I did it just in a back loop. So I want to go underneath the two loops so it's nice and secure. All right. There we go. Let's set this one here. Okay, so chain three as usual for the first one. And proceed. Double crochet all the way around. And this is size H. I think if I had to use a size I look, it would have made the stitches a little larger. So that's also an option. You can use a larger hook. And that'll, that'll make the stitches a little larger. And, and then um, it would um, it would reach to the top without that extra row. But since I already started with this smaller hook, I'm just going to add an extra row. All right. For Halloween, you could do a black and orange stripe. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I think that should be okay, right? <clears throat> you can do pink and red and white for Valentine's Day, green, uh, St. Patrick's Day. You know, you know, all the different occasions, if you're so inclined to celebrate them all. And of course, you know, there are other uh, specific uh, cultural occasions, you know. <clears throat> so it's very versatile is what I'm saying, basically. It can, it can be used for a, a lot of different reasons, a lot of different uh, 
occasions and reasons. So this is row, row nine. I originally had just nine rows, but then I, I, I checked the height and it didn't quite reach. So, all right, let's see. I'm gonna check again. And it should, <clears throat> it should fit. It should go all the way to the top. Huh? Oh, there you go, see? All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so now just to um, you know secure the top a bit, I'm going to I'm going to slip stitch across that last row into each stitch across. That's going to make it um, that's going to give it a little little more structure and firmness as opposed to just finishing with the stitches like that. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Just a slip stitch. I actually only slip stitches so as the chain line. Right? Hmm. All right, that's not too. That's not going to make too much of a difference, really. Okay, so okay. And I'm just slip stitching in the back loop of each double crochet. And slip stitch is just you go into the chain, you, you pull the yarn through, and then you pull it through the loop. That's all. It's kind of like making a chain on top of the chain. Approaching a new day. Yeah, a bit of a night owl lately. Okay, that's the thing with slip stitch. Um, let's see. Sometimes. Oh. oh. I lost my spot. Oh, okay. I'm almost okay, right here. <clears throat> I usually mark it. I usually use a stitch marker, but. I don't think it was necessary this time. Okay. And then we just slip here and then once. Okay, and pull through. And that's it. I'm going to. <coughs> 
I'm not going to cut it yet. I'm just going to do it one last. Now, at this point, because this, um, oh, that wasn't too bad. Sometimes um, the slip stitching makes it, um, gives it a little resistance over this wide area. But that went over pretty easily. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clip that. <clears throat> All right. All right. So, and then of course you're gonna weave in. Let me just do that now, so I can uh, maybe demonstrate the ribbon. Let's see. All right. Let me. Well, I just I just used a hook. Some people like to use a needle, but I just used a hook and pull it through. Um, I usually try to like run it in two different directions. That's the best way to keep it from unraveling. Especially with this, since it's going to be something that you might be um, removing, taking off and on while you want to make sure that you weave in that last little string really well. But for now, that's all I'm going to do, just because I want to demonstrate. Let me see if I can find a nice piece of ribbon. All right, well, I don't want to be away too long, but uh, <laughs> this is kind of wide. Oh, gosh. What happened to my ribbon? All right, what, what I'll do this time is I'll just go ahead and um, I'll, make the, I'll make the crochet cord like I did with this one. So, that doesn't take long. I think it's like... I think I did like 66 chains or something like that. So, and then I'll, I'll weave it through so you can see the whole process as far as how to weave it into once. Um, okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know how I come up with number 66. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I think for the sake of time, I'm both. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 41, 2, 3, 4, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 51. So now you're just going to pull these like really tight so that it makes kind of a knot on both ends. And then, um, and then you'll, then you'll weave in these little tails, but I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have my small hook out and it's going to take too long with the big hook. So we're going to skip that step. <laughs> okay. So now, um, let's see, I'm going to find the back. And the back is that um, you can you can identify it by the um, the chain three uh, stitches. Like in the row, there's the double crochets, and then there's, there's that that chain three that always tells you where the beginning is. 
and uh, actually we're going to weave it I think uh, let's see where did I weave it into last time I haven't made these in a while but I decided since Mother's Day is coming up to, to try to do another design all right so I'm going to let's see the increase row the decrease row was row six okay so we're gonna we're going to weave it into row seven yeah seven eight nine yeah okay and for that we need a safety pin and I made a point to leave one or you could use um, other things as well but a safety pin works really good now what I'm doing I'm folding it in half and I'm just placing that half mark over the center of the back. And I'm gonna switch this. Okay, that's gonna seven. Okay, so I'm putting it here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put my pin in one end and. Uh, I'm going to just weave, start weaving it through. Wait, I just want to make sure. Okay, so I'm just going to hold like half of the cord so that it doesn't move, so that I get an even distribution when I weave it. You'll, you'll see what I mean when I start weaving it. Okay, so just like that, just like you're sewing or something right you're kind of you're kind of sewing with the cord just weaving it in and out now when it gets like almost to the end you're going to take the pin out and then you're going to attach it to the other side And then weave like the same way. Actually, this way is faster. I just weave it through like that. Okay, so you see, it's like one is longer than the other. So, which means that I didn't center it exactly or something like that. But that's that's not a, a you know, you just pull it. <laughs> okay, so let me just make sure that um, I move it through as far as it needs to be woven. Okay, so when, you, when you're done weaving, there should just be like one stitch in between. Okay, so now you can take the pin out. And you slip your vase in. And then you pull like so, and then you make your bow. I even practice making bows because you know that, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good fit, right? It's like right. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> okay, and then I make my bow. A loop in one hand under the pull it and voila. Okay, then just uh, straighten it out, you know, adjust it as needed. Yeah, and then your bow sits nice. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna you're gonna weave these in, and you could um you know put some embellishment on it, like on this one, I put little stars. So maybe I'll put stars on this. This yellow is so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's so cheerful, bright. So um, I might make a, a Happy Mother's Day little, little button to put on there. Or maybe a little tag or something. You know, a little um, die cut tag. It has a little cute uh, sentiment on it or something. But yeah, that's it. That's your um, vase cozy. 
and this is that um, it's, a, it's a five inch vase and I happen to uh, get this at Michael's and I think they're like um, like two dollars and change something like that and they're not too expensive they might go up now then. <laughs> oh just business right nothing wrong with making a profit all right yeah. Maybe I can snatch up some more before they raise. I know they're gonna raise the price now. Well, I'm sure that's not the only place I carries them. I mean, and like I mentioned, you could probably get it directly from the manufacturer as well. Probably get it in bulk, even you know, some places will do that. If you go to the flower district, you can get all kinds of vases. Um, you know, like this for you know. In, in a lot of cases, and uh, for a, a lot less than you would get it at a craft store, um, their pricing runs differently than for a craft store. So, but yeah, so that's um, that's another covered vase, and I made this one particularly for Mother's Day, and um, I'll finish it off, and when I'm done, perhaps I'll I'll do a review. Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your crafting if you're so inclined. And um, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. I've got lots and lots more to share. All right, take care. Bye-bye.